Hey, Viking fans. Looking back at ESPN and Mel Kuyper and other draft rankings from the 2023 draft, I determined who I thought the Minnesota Vikings steal the draft was. I'm going to talk about it next in three, two, one. <laughs> Yeah, the rounds go, brothers and sisters. This is Go World, brought to you by Minnesota Sports Talk. I'm your host, Dave. You can follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook at Go World. Make sure you hit subscribe, like, and comment. Help me Hulk smash the YouTube YouTube algorithms. Let's go. Let's go. I am just, you know, I want to go check out what they were thinking about the some of the Vikings players before the draft. Stuff I haven't read, and I'm going to do it live on air. Uh, just to just to show you my reaction and seeing if I agree on what what they thought of him and and ultimately decide who the Vikings draft day steal was. I had several last year. I had Andrew Boot Jr. I thought was a steal last year in the second round. I I had T uh Ty Chandler as a steal in that fifth round, and I had Jalen Naylor. In that sixth round as a steal. But this year I only have one that I think is a steal for the Minnesota Vikings. Not counting the UDFAs. There's some nice little gems there. But in the draft itself, the Vikings got one guy I thought was their steal of the draft. And honestly, it's probably one of the steals for any team in the draft. Considering how what people thought of them. So let's look. Let's, look, let's recap. Let me uh, let me add this. Got Jordan Addison first round. I didn't think he'd fall to us uh, at one. I didn't do a whole, a whole lot of study on him until like the day of the day or day before the draft. I watched a highlight video. I like him. Uh, I think he's gonna be. And some people don't think so, but I think he's a one of the perfect compliments to um, to Justin Jefferson. Sure, you can have similar uh, skill sets. And still be a compliment. I think I think he's legit, man. I think he can track the ball deep, and uh, he runs great routes. So therefore, I think he's a great addition to the team. And right out of the gate, our number two receiver, and might be one B. That's how good he is. We may not see Justin Jefferson get two thousand yards. We might not even see him get eighteen hundred. We may see him in the fourteen to sixteen hundred dollar yard range because this guy may be that good. All right, but he's not my steal of the draft. Makai Blackman sure as heck is not. I didn't even know who he was. I don't think any is there. NFL.com, ESPN. I mean, had him on like the third page of their draft rankings, and at the time we picked him, we they didn't even draft as anybody on the second page on ESPN or on NFL.com. So, no, Makai Blackman is not. But he is a good player. I like him, and he has a chance to start this year. If he, if Addison, Makai Blackman, and uh, uh, not Jay Ward, but Jay Ward, he's going to come. Uh, again, he's not the the fourth guy we drafted. I'll, I'll talk about him. There's three guys. If we they start this year, get some starting time, this is a, a draft for me. But Jay Ward, uh just a just a really solid player, going to be a special teams demon, and has the leadership qualities. We needed some replacements, younger guys. We got one in Jay Ward. We're deep at safety; that is not a problem. But Jaquelin Roy got the proper pronunciation now. Jaquelin Roy, if he gets a start, Makai Blackman gets a start, and Addison gets a start. That is an A draft for me, considering we only had. Five draft picks to start this draft. I thought we would only get one impact player. So if we get a second and a third impact player, all the power to us. But he is not my steal of the draft. I think he was drafted properly. I do. Jay Quellen, Roy, drafted properly in this draft. Jaron Hall. Some may have had him in the third, fourth round. Uh, I don't think many did. I think fifth round was an adequate spot for Jaron Hall to get drafted. 
He is not my steal of the draft. My steal of the draft, we got in the seventh round, Dwayne McBride. Dwayne McBride was the Minnesota Vikings steal the draft. And long-term uh, results may, sh- may show that he might have been one of the steals of the whole NFL draft getting drafted in the seventh round. Pacheco uh, for Kansas City got drafted in the seventh, and we get Dwayne McBride. I'm thinking we got a better player than they got in the seventh round. The problem is it's deep right now with the running back group we have. Will Dwayne McBride find some time? Already, Kwesi says he's got starter ability. All right, he does. Dwayne McBride was ranked 89th on Mel Kuyper's board, 89th out of, out of the, his, his top 150 board he has, 89th. He got picked at like 222 or something like that. Some crazy end of the seventh round type of crap. Dwayne McBride, steal of the Minnesota Vikings draft. So that's two years in a row we got, I thought, a steal of the draft as a running back. I it is crazy to think how much talent we have in the running back room right now. Corsell will be diminished with Dwayne uh with Dalvin Cook probably being, being gone June 1st. But hey, it it is a good problem to have, man. Ty Chandler, Dwayne McBride, uh Alexander Madison, Kenny Nwangu might be the odd man out. And I talked about uh, Knowles, our UDFA kicker turner that we picked up. He might make it as a receiver. So, hey, do we need a fourth running back on the team? We'll find out, man. But Dwayne McBride's the real deal running back. Let's hear the write-up about him. NFL.com had before. Uh, He's out of Florida. He was a junior, 5'10", 209 pounds. He looks he looks solid though. He looks physically solid. This is a definitely a, a running back's running back when you look at him. I'm not going to doubt I, I want to say he uh reminds me of a particular running back, but I don't want to put myself out there. But there's some top end running backs I saw in him. Now he's 5'10, 209. 30 uh, inch five and five eighths inch arms, nine and a half running as running back. I, I like the hand size. It's good enough for a running back. I just worry, you know, being able to secure the ball. He did have some fumbling issues. He had five fumbles last year. Um, so, Hey, that it's important. Uh, he has a traits. You got to keep handle the ball or you're going to be on the bench. Uh, Adrian Peterson had problems, man. So, Hey, who knows what this guy what will happen? This guy he didn't me- he didn't do any measuring in the combine. Apparently, had a hamstring injury, but he played fast. He broke away from players. He has speed, he, but more importantly, this guy has great balance. There's a couple of things that he's done: yards after uh, contact, uh, forced missed tackles. This guy is like top three in both those categories. It's insane. Now, again, not against the top talent. I did watch every carry against LSU. He didn't have a whole lot of yards. didn't have a whole lot of carries. They were down a lot of the game. But this guy was hard to bring down, and he got to, he was going to get – he saved them from getting tackles for a loss uh, on multiple occasions because he was so hard to bring down LSU players, overpowering the UAB offensive line. Uh, he didn't get any breakaways or anything like that, but he had a touchdown and he uh, got in easily standing up. This guy has vision, short area quickness, and enough speed in the NFL to break long ones. Uh, I, I, you know, I compare him a little faster, Alexander Madison, but a little smaller. But, but uh, I think he's a little faster than Alexander Madison. But right now, Alexander Madison is probably solidified as their number one if Dalvin Cook's gone. This guy can earn some short yardage, back up, first and second down carries. Uh, Ty Chandler might be the change of pace guy, receiving, running back. 
Now, this guy only caught like five passes his entire college year career at UAB. Saw one UAB fan's comments that we d- it wasn't even in the playbook. <laughs> he did k- get a swing pass against UAB um, against uh, LSU. It was good. He didn't look confused. He looked capable. Turned it upfield. He looks like he can catch the ball. Some of the commentators say that scout and in, in the game, the scouts think he's got hands. I think he. I think he can catch just fine. I didn't think Kenny Nwanga could catch. He. Fi- I found out he could. Go look at Dalvin Cook. He has trouble um, keeping his balance and the balls being thrown to him. He fell on his butt a couple of times this last season, wide open. So I think this guy has the balance, shorter quickness. I think he's going to be fine. Dalvin Cook is a good uh, uh, average pass catcher. I think this guy could be that, if not better, just because he looks so stable, uh, just hard to bring down, uh, just a base on the guy. And the reception I did see looked like he was fully capable of catching the ball. Uh, His player bio, a three-star recruit from uh, Vanguard High School in Florida, McBride impressed as a true freshman by averaging 9.3 yards a carry in six games, 47 for 439, four TDs. He was a second-team all-conference USA pick as a sophomore, topping the Blazers with 1,371 yards and 13 scores on the ground, 204 carries, 6.7 per, um, three catches for 19 yards, 6.3 in 13 games, five starts. Only five starts. What the hell was he not starting? All right, McBride was one of the top running backs in the country in 2022, receiving third-team Associated Press All-American and first-team All-Conference honors by setting UAB single-season record with 1,713 rushing yards. He was an All-American playing for UAB. That's hard to do. 19 rushing uh, scores, amazing. Even more amazing, 7.4 yards per carry on 233 carries. This wasn't 300 yard, 300 carry back either, man. That's pretty good. He doesn't have that much wear on him right now, and he left early. He's only 21 years old. We got a feature running back on this team, guys. Uh, he let. In fact, our starter is only 20, or this year is only 20, the four backs we have. If Dalvin Cook is gone or 24 years or younger, looking good, Vikings. Hey. He led the FBS in yards per carry, ranked second in rushing yards, tied for third in rushing touchdowns. He also caught two passes for 10 yards, five per 11 games with nine starts. Why Why isn't he starting <laughs> in two of these games? Opting out of the team's Bahamas Bowl appearance to prepare for the draft, smart move. They, uh, I think they were, they were just a 500 team, I think. Uh, that was by Chad Reuters. Uh, overview. That guy's busy, man. That's a lot of write-ups for this guy. Over a productive runner with the physical athletic attributes that could create an upward trajectory in the right situation, and we got one. Let's go. McBride is experienced and comfortable running in all blocking schemes. There's reports on this. There's there's numbers on this. I can't repeat them because I can't memorize everything, but apparently inside and outside zone, he's completely like a uh, top echelon in those categories. He's a smooth hipped and runs with good blend of shiftiness and power. I don't think he's elite shiftiness. Like he's not Barry Sanders elite, but balance wise, maybe, but short area quickness, very, very good. Not elite like a Barry Sanders would be. Uh, He'd benefit from quicker tempo, decisiveness inside. He must eliminate ball security issues or he could end up falling out of favor quickly. That's his problem. Five. Now, five fumbles apparently last season. He freaking AP had like 11 one year. So who knows? McBride's lack of third down value could hurt his grass slotting, but his upside is worth the day three selection. So they predicted day three in the NFL.com. Mel Kuyper ESPN had him as 89th best player available. Somewhere in the middle, man. Somewhere in the middle. I think. I think uh, I would lean towards where Mel Kuyper had him. I think he was he could have been the third best running back in this draft. He's at least top five, but third is his, probably his high side, maybe even two, but third for sure. 
uh, strengths ran for 120 or more yards in 10 of 11 games. 2022 looks comfortable running behind every blocking scheme. Uh, above average vision to find what the run is offering him. Great. I think he's got very good vision. I think he's, I think, uh, I, th- I can see a lot of him in, uh, Alexander Madison now, like 24 year old Alexander Madison looks off tackler to buy time for his cuts, Gen- generates collision momentum up to second level. Oily hips allow him to swivel and stride around tacklers. Able to get to sharp backside cuts on inside zone runs. Power and finesse at his disposal near goal line. Nothing I don't love about um, what's written about him except for the fumbling and the fact that they don't think he can catch passes, but I think he can. Weaknesses can be a little cautious as an inside runner. Uh, I could see that. He danced a little bit. Burst between the tackles is just average. I don't know. I don't know about that. Can be a little inconsistent along with blocks to develop. Uh, yeah, I could see that. I think he's just young, though. I think it's just like uh, Alexander Mass, and he's going to grow into that. Bumble woes will uh, make him a target for defenses looking to punch the ball out. True. Um, almost no pass catching experience over three seasons. Now, one of the biggest complaints I had about Adrian Peterson, he, if he's running right, he just kept his ball where where he is where he caught got in his arm or if he's running right or left he's got in his right arm he would never switch it over one thing i like about Dwayne mcbride i seen him running right he had a left hand he switched it to his right with where there was nobody going to contact him and then when he was able, when he took the hit that ball was in his right hand if he goes out it's going out of bounds i saw that in him and that's something i'm really excited i like about him ap had a problem of only carrying it one arm uh, and that was it, no matter no matter if he's running left or right. Uh, that's my assessment of that. So it's one thing I like uh, better than uh, – he's a, he's, a, he's a throwback to Adrian Peterson type of running. Um, he's not going to catch a lot of balls out of the backfield, although I think he might be, be – he'll be better at it than Adrian Peterson is. Adrian Peterson is below average pass catcher, below average pass blocker too. I do not know uh, how good a blocker – uh, McBride is, but hopefully he's better than Adrian Peterson was. But long term, I think this guy could be a starter in the league. Only thing holding him back is his development in the passing game and and uh, fumbling. Uh, if he can, if he, he if he can hold on the ball and he can catch passes, this guy could be a, a starter in this league. That, my friends, that, my friends, is Dwayne McBride. The steal of the Vikings draft, possibly one of the best steals in the NFL draft. Time will tw- time will tw- ugh, time will tell. Mel Kiper ranked him 89th overall. ESPN ha- like this guy. He fell. Uh, it's just uh, unexplainable, unexplainable why this a guy with this much talent could fall. Other than they just don't value running backs as much as they used to, even though they drafted two in the first round this year. Hey, that's it for today, guys. Make sure you subscribe, like, and comment. Boom. Help me Hulk smash the YouTube YouTube algorithms. Let's go. Let's go. Cue the music.